Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us this 2021 LG Nano 88 in 55 inches. Utilising nanocell tech from LG, the 2021 Nano 88 is the middle ground in the range, delivering the sharpest detail as well as brilliantly pure colours, all for a relatively decent cost. Available in 50, 55, 65 and 75 inches, this real 4K display can enhance all of your favourite content to its full potential no matter what you watch. Taking a look at the box, the Nano 88 does come with a good handful of features and enhancements, as well as containing a powerful quad-core processor for powering a detailed picture. Opening up the top, you'll find all the parts to the stand as well as the power cable. As this is a 55-inch TV, the top of the box doesn't just slide away, so you will need a second pair of hands to help lift it out through the top. All of the remaining accessories you need are found at the back of the TV inside the box, including the user guides, a few cable management clips, and the Magic Remote. Once out of the box and laying face down on a covered surface, we get a good look at the connections we have on offer on the back here. There's a universal 300x300 300 300 base amount and an L-shaped cutout packed with all of the essential inputs. The power cable provided is a decent length, enough to reach to the nearest power outlet, but the plus side here is that it's not fixed to the back, giving you the ability to swap it out for a longer one if you're wall mounting for example. In terms of inputs, you get two strips along the bottom and the side for easy access on both the stand and wall mount. On the bottom, there's an optical audio out, a 3.5mm headphone jack, a LAN input for solid internet connection via Ethernet, a pair of satellite and cable ports, and USBs 3 and 2. Along the side, you get the USB port 1, a common interface slot, two regular HDMI ports, and two 2.1 HDMI ports that support 4K input at 120Hz. HDMI 3 also supports eARC for enhanced sound when connected to a compatible soundbar. It's brilliant to see that you're gifted with two HDMIs that support 4K at 120Hz. It makes it so much easier when connecting two next-gen consoles, for example, saving time swapping them out when you want to change consoles. Taking a look at the stand here, it comes in two parts, the back attachment with the hidden cable tidy compartment and the long semicircle base. It's relatively long thanks to the shape, and I found it kept the TV incredibly steady. Attaching the stand was easy enough, just using the screws provided, simply screw the base into the supporting back piece before fixing the whole stand to the back of the display while lying flat. When placing the TV, I did find that the stand was pretty wide and deep, so make sure you consider the size of the stand before purchasing your TV. For keeping to that minimal theme, the cable tidy system is pretty decent, letting me channel all the cables I need down the centre of the stand, utilising that handy clip cover to keep them all fixed in place. For the cables attached on the side, you can even attach these little clips that help hold HDMIs in place when guiding them to the back to maintain that clean, minimalistic look. Turning it on, I was prompted with all the usual setup windows that include logging into my LG account, programming in any channels, and enabling any features. It does take a good few minutes to set up, but once you're through, it brings you straight to the dashboard for selecting your chosen content. Navigating all the tiles is easy enough, using a great visual display for showing me all of the most popular movies and shows and their accompanying streaming services. With all 2021 LG TVs this year, you get quick access to all the most used settings on this handy pop-up settings menu along the left-hand side of the screen. Not only can you toggle between picture and sound modes in seconds, it also appears discreetly as an overlay over the content that you're already watching. The best part here is using the magic remote that came with the TV to alter each setting with the cursor on screen, rather than repeatedly pressing buttons. This remote has indeed been one of my favourite parts about the 2021 LG range. It's easy to point directly at the part of the screen that I want to interact with, getting to where I need with just one click, and it even has voice control if I really want to find something instantly without using the menus at all. But before I go any further, I made sure energy saving mode was turned off for the purposes of testing the picture brightness, as well as double checking that the TV had the latest updates installed. So making the most out of the gallery mode feature, I got a quick look at the overall effect of this TV's design. Now the thickness is slightly larger than you'd expect from a modern TV, but it sits relatively flush to the wall if you do choose to wall mount it. The TV is edged in a luxury looking brushed metal that frames the whole TV nicely. The picture goes practically edge to edge thanks to that thin bezel, really making the most of the whole picture. Now getting into the display specifications, you get a 3840x2160 4K IPS display with local dimming, and an A7 Gen 4 processor. In terms of picture enhancements, you get Cinema HDR and HDR10 Pro on top of having access to Dolby Vision IQ for watching movies and playing games at a picture quality the makers originally intended you to see. 
Of course, if you watch a lot of standard definition content, you also get the option to see all of it beautifully upscaled into 4K, thanks to the AI tech built in. The enhancements did bring out slight details in the face on screen to draw the eye to some of the details I might have missed in some of my favourite movies and shows. With some of these amazing features enabled, the picture did look stunning, delivering wonderfully rich colours and nice sharp details. Animated shows look beautifully crisp with those bright colours popping right out of the screen. To the untrained eye, you may not notice much difference, but once you turn some of these features off, you may not want to watch without them again as the slight enhancements really go a long way. The nano style panel is built to bring out pure colours across movies, games and shows. Though the slightly dimmer brightness can bring out glare a little more than usual, it can be easily manipulated in the settings menu both in the panel and screen brightness scales. You do have the choice to change either the panel or the screen brightness, but I prefer altering the panel brightness as it manipulates the backlight to help bring up the bright parts of the picture without affecting the blacks and shadows to maintain a strong contrast. But if you want to avoid changing the more complex settings, there are 9 picture modes available that set the brightness and colour to better match the tone of specific content like sports and movies. For the best settings, I usually stuck with ISF bright and dark modes because they levelled out the colour and contrast well to suit whatever the light levels in the room were at the time. I also thought colours looked more natural as opposed to the vibrant, oversaturated, vivid and sport modes on offer. Filmmaker and cinema mode is pretty good for movies, but to be honest, it can sometimes dim the picture by adding warmer tones and lowering the brightness. So after watching movies and 4K specific YouTube content as well as playing a handful of games, I thought the display performed pretty well. The detail in the picture came out beautifully in my favourite movies, and I felt that the 4K upscaling did work well on those older films, creating a clearer image in some of the older movies on Netflix. The viewing angle was relatively impressive, even at a very sharp angle, and despite the glare affecting the view at times in a bright room, I was satisfied with the view overall. As always, I did a few picture tests just to make sure that there were no glaring deformities in the display that I should be worried about. Now the brightness test saw the picture produce a much higher nits output than I expected, which I felt was perfectly adequate for seeing all of the detail and content during the day and even more for nighttime viewing. I did see a few instances of light blooming around the subtitles in some high contrast scenes, but it was only really noticeable in the blooming and dimming tests when seeing a completely black picture. In dark scenes, I didn't really notice the blooming, and though the blacks were not as deep as I would have liked, the picture quality was still sharp and detailed to enjoy 4K resolution content with ease. Now as this TV uses local dimming as opposed to full array, I was a little concerned about the effects, but in the few hours I spent switching between various movies, I didn't notice the dimming that much. The picture's stayed pretty consistent and the dark scenes really were of a good quality. When it comes to sound, there are some brilliant AI features that help adapt output as you change up shows. Tech-wise, you get 20 watt downfiring speakers with a 2.2 channel. It still sounded clear and rich across a variety of content and I could keep the volume low and still get coverage even from across the room. As always, I often use the quick toggle menu on the left to switch between sound modes, such as clear voice for enhancing quiet conversations and AI sound if you're browsing through multiple YouTube videos. Throughout the majority of testing this TV out, I did keep on AI sound, as I thought it adapted a lot of the sound levels pretty well across a variety of content. In particular, I found having the automatic volume adjustment enabled as it saved me adjusting the volume manually between loud and quiet scenes. Of course, you can treat yourself to some LG compatible soundbars that will greatly enhance the overall sound output, but as always, it's hard to take my word for it. So here's a quick sample of the audio quality that you can expect from the TV speakers alone. Our forces rallied and drove the orcs back. Our enemy. As an LG TV, the Nano 88 works in harmony with the Xbox Series X, not only delivering a brilliant cinematic picture for shows and movies, but also offering a standout display with ultra-fast response times for next-gen gaming. One of my favourite features in 2021 LG models is the Game Optimizer. It recognised the console as soon as I connected it using Simplink, and it switched all of the settings to Game Optimizer mode without needing to adjust a thing. I quite like the handy pop-up menu system that appears on the bottom of the screen, showing live FPS status as well as low latency and sound activation. There's even a more advanced menu that lets you tweak fine details like sound and contrast, keeping all of your game-specific modes and settings in one place. Though it's not always entirely obvious, you can certainly see an improvement when playing fast-paced shooters and racing games with the game optimizer turned on. I hardly noticed any stutter or lag in those life-or-death moments that means the most. 
As a collector at heart, the one feature I thought worked exceptionally well was the black stabilizer sliders. Though it kind of washes out the picture, being able to manipulate the shadows in a relatively dark game was very helpful for seeing enemies or collectibles that I might not have spotted in the dark, making gameplay just that little bit more satisfying. Overall, I found gameplay a smooth experience, mostly thanks to the automatic features in place. Knowing the background features were working hard to avoid disruptions, usually made by lag, really let me relax and play the game to its full potential. The picture kept up wonderfully with the console's performance, which is clear to see why when checking out the display information on the console's settings. All the green ticks instantly let me know what I have, and also let me see that I do get Dolby Vision for gaming, ALLM support, and variable refresh rate. Racing through the streets of Mexico in Forza Horizon 5 or taking down zombies in Back for Blood, the picture really helped bring out those details that made the game more immersive. So after using this TV for a good couple of hours, I was pleasantly surprised with the quality output. I genuinely thought the quality output was pretty decent. The 4K picture brought out some beautiful colour and contrast, boosting the details in some of my favourite films better than I expected. I could put a few of the brightness and dimming issues aside when looking at the super sharp picture in some of the standard definition upscaled content. It is a brilliant picture for the price, giving me everything I need in a 4K TV for watching a wide variety of content. So what are your thoughts on this LG Nano 88? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.